Hi everyone. So today, I decided to review Pretty Reckless by L.J. Shane. As you all know, I liked Vicious better than the rest of the bad boy romances I read. I think I gave it an 8, which is a lot for a romance, if you know me. Maybe I haven't said enough about how much I liked Vicious because I somehow convinced myself to read another novel by the same author. Now, I don't know, maybe I built up Vicious too much in my mind because I'm not happy with this book. Like if someone asks me to construct a graph of Pretty Reckless, which will be a weird thing to ask but still, if someone did that, the graph will be high in the beginning because I think the beginning was interesting but then the line kept on sinking low. I think I mentioned this in one of my videos that this book started off great but then the incidents were just dragging out. The novel became really slow and not to mention boring then, surprisingly, it got interesting again, and I actually got hope that maybe this book will have a good climax. But, of course, life is full of disappointments. Let me start from the beginning. There's a guy named Penn, and a girl named Daria. Penn is poor and tolerable as a person. Anyways, he has got a sister, Sylvia, or Via, or V. So, Via and Daria are in the same ballet class, and Daria's mother teaches that class. Daria is rich, but she's passive-aggressive and jealous of Via. I'm not going to bore you with trivial details, so let me get straight to the point. Penn likes Daria, shocker, and he gave her this sea glass necklace, which is cute because they are 14, so... But the hero Penn, he wears shirts with holes at the top of his heart. You'd think that this is because of some cliche reason, but it's not. You'll see at the end of this video. V is a great ballerina and Daria is jealous of her because this is a teen novel so this element is kind of necessary. Anyways, Via gets accepted into a great dancing school and then somehow Daria gets hold of her letter and she's torn between throwing it into the bin or handing it over to her mother. And guess who comes in front of her? Yes, of course, it's a creepy friend, Penn. You can skip this if you like, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, because this is important. When Daria and Penn talk, what's in the letter? He asks. My worst nightmare. Give it to me. So I do. I don't know why. Most likely because I want to get rid of it. Because I want Weir to hurt as much as I do. Because I want mom to be upset. Marks. By the way, this is her substitution for God. Marks. What's wrong with me? I'm a horrible person. His eyes are still on mine as he tears the letter to sheds and lets the pieces float like confetti into the trash can between us. Touching, whatever it was. Anyways, you saw how Pen takes the letter from her and sets fire to his sister's hopes and dreams. Then his sister takes off and when Pen realizes what he did, he makes it his life's mission to destroy Daria's life. Then circumstances cause both of them to live under the same roof. This is where the book got slow. Very little was happening and I kept reading pages and pages waiting for something to happen. But nope, nothing happened. Oh, I forgot to creep you out. My bad. Daria is rumored to have an affair type thing with her principal because apparently I was destined to read something as cheap as this. Read this and tell me if it makes you throw up. Pritchard and I we go way back. Our first encounter occurred a few days after Via disappeared, when I was still in middle school. Our counselor was on her honeymoon, so when I broke down in tears, my teacher directed me to principal's office. Richard was attentive and nice and young. Ahem. <clears throat> young? I don't care, he's your principal. Still no luck, huh? How about this one? Do your parents punish you, Daria? Do anyone actually like this kind of stuff? Let's try this one. I think what you need more than anything else is stop drumming, leaning forward, is to be disciplined. Okay. And somehow, if you manage to hold yourself back, don't worry, it gets even more sick than this. You can read the story yourself to find out. Now, let me cut to the chase. You got the setting. Now read this. You're like our son. Melody smiles across the table to Penn, who doesn't smile back which puts your number of children back to two after you dumped me. I mumble into my glass of water. Thank you, Daria. Mel bites out, cutting viciously into her casserole. Her eyes are sparkling. We can always count on you. 
To dampen the mood, Pen frowns. I think he's starting to see that I'm not the only one to blame for this whole mess. He opens his mouth, but then my mother says, Pen, sweetheart, we have something to discuss. Privately. Before or after, speak to Bailey about New York. I inquire, tossing my napkin on the table and standing up. And what about me? You need to talk to me about anything? About my cheer, school, who I'm hanging out with these days, college applications, anything, Melody. Any freaking thing. That's not Chanel. Silence. Okay, let me get this right. Whatever. I flip my hair. Casseroles are dirt anyway. Enjoy your car feast, losers. Okay. I plaster my fingers into an L shape on my forehead before retiring upstairs on a huff. Okay, this is a bit much. But do you feel the toxic relationship here? And these conversations are the worst part of this novel. I mean, Daria doesn't even call her mother mom. Her mother treats her like an equal, which still doesn't give Daria the right to act the way she just did. No need to be disrespectful. Like I get it, that Daria wants attention. But being rude to her mother will never help her to get her life straight. Or rubbing the fact that she messed up as a parent in her face every time she gets. The reason I'm discussing this with you is because I got to hear all these horrible things about her mother throughout the novel. But I just got two chapters where I got a very vague description why no one did anything to fix this family. They never talked and whenever they talked, they were saying something awful. I think I wanted to see some damage control over whatever Daria said or did to her mother. Two chapters are definitely not enough to make up for the fact that Daria hurt her mother on purpose unlike her mother. See for yourself. This is just horrible. Here, I growl. I'm going to watch The Real Housewives of Della's until we eat. Or you can stay with me and we can look at the new Chanel catalog. Melody suggests cracking open a white bottle of wine. Hey, maybe you could. No thanks, I quit. I plaster my most plastic smile, making a slow battling of my eyelashes. Please don't embarrass us both by trying again. Even if you offer me a shopping spree in Milan, the answer will still be no. See, at least Melody tries to make the situation better at times. Then, after a long time, I got something huge. Rhea was missing, so Daria's mother, Melody, she will try to find her, and she found her. Yay! Don't get too excited. Check out the graph again. When she comes back, the story turns back to its normal movie mode. Daria is threatened, and that's why she is moving away. Some important revelations. Pen and Daria got together. Oh my god, I did not see that coming. But anyways, thanks to Via and her messed up head, she gives this ultimatum to our hero. If you don't break up with her, I'll tell her mother, friends, and everyone she cares about what she did to me. We both know they love her, but don't like her one bit. All they need is a little push to make Daria become a reject, and I'm more than happy to show it will be a spectacular fall. But if you do, as I say, her secret's safe with me. Yeah, I know. She'll be perfect for Christian Grey. She'll make him cry within a matter of seconds. Anyways, what do you think Pen would do? Yes, he leaves Daria. The scene was actually heartbreaking. Then we're back to the principal issue. Well, he's actually Fifty Shades of Gross. He hurts Daria. This imagery gets even worse, by the way, because Daria's father, Jamie, with Vicious, Trent, Dean, and Pen, actually avenges what that freak principal did to his daughter. Not gonna tell you what that freak principal did to his daughter. But if you want to creep yourself out, I'm going to give you the link in the description box below. If you want to buy this book, you can go buy it or you can check out my Goodreads review of this book. Go knock yourself out. Since Pen is all in love with Daria, we need someone to ruin her life. And Bea is doing that perfectly. Then we get our typical cliche Pen pushing Daria away because he loves her. I did not flip out for no reason about this book. But my issue is with Daria. I liked her character in the first few chapters because she is different from the rest of the girls in romance novels. But I think she went too far with this. It feels like if a girl is not going to be a good person, she will be a bad person. And in the end, the novel wrapped up too soon. I couldn't get over the fact that Daria and her mother's relationship was repaired in just two chapters. But that's not the only issue with this novel. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that Pen wears shirts with holes. Here, check out the final reason why I lost interest in this novel. The truth about the holes 
in my shirts is as follows. My last recollection of Stan, my dad, was when he left us. I was five, and I had been climbing on the tree in our backyard, trying to create a makeshift treehouse. I was obsessed with tree houses and forts and sandcastles. Looking back, I probably just wanted a real home, something I didn't have. My father didn't want to spoil us, so he refused to build me one. Anyway, I ended up falling on my ass. But on my way down, my shirt got caught on a branch and a huge hole opened right where my heart is. It was a close call for sure. My mother was already halfway addicted, so she just told me to be more careful next time. My dad's mom though went berserk. Iona Sully is every shade of insane in the coloring book, the kind of religion that believes in curses and spell. She said, I was an unruly boy and I called her an old hag because that's what my mom called her. Of course, I didn't realize mom was saying those things behind her back for a reason. At any rate, Iona cast a spell on me. She said, my heart will be broken until I find one. That I'm going to walk around with holes in my shirts to symbolize what I don't have until I experience true love. But until then, I will be miserable. Naturally, I thought it to be, you know. But then, weird things started happening to me. Every time, I didn't wear a whole shirt. One time, I almost got run over. The other, the money I stole from my mom, mysteriously disappeared from my pocket. A dog bit me. My bikes got stolen. So, I started cutting holes in my shirts as a safety measure. I had no choice. I got a lot of mouthfuls from my dad about it. Obviously, but it worked. Kuch bhi! Kuch bhi! What on earth is this? The majority level of this novel started to sink after this explanation. Just because he is pretty, am I supposed to believe this thing? Oh, by the way, if a spell like this exists, then what am I doing here? I need to talk to Penn's grandma to make wishes real, then curse me so that I can be with wishes. In the end, we get a very Rapunzel type line. Now, my objection with these lines is that being in a chaotic family doesn't just go away after you move out of your town. Because that's something you grew up with. So every time some problem strikes your way, you're going to react just the same way you saw your family deal with it. Here, read this extract from this article. You'll find the link in the description box below. Please read this article if you have some time to spare. Victimized children growing up in a dysfunctional family are innocent and have absolutely no control over their toxic life environment. They grew up with multiple emotional scarring caused by repeated trauma and pain from their parents' actions, words, and attitudes. Ultimately, they will have a different growth and nurture of their individual self. The influenced individuals will resume various parenting roles rather than enjoying their childhood. Vital parts of their childhood are missing, which will eventually have a harmful effect that extends to their adult life. The reason why I brought this up is because it's not easy as this novel portrayed it to be. Like in three or four chapters, everything was sorted out. But if you're not taking this novel too seriously, then it's fine. But I just wanted to throw it out there because most kids think that this kind of family dynamics is normal. But there were some things I liked about this book too. The novel wasn't all bad. I liked that for the first time, I got to read a novel where a girl wasn't trying to become a good woman. And even Pan was also good, until his pixie fairy side came out. I mean, come on, dude. Holes, no holes, life sucks. Learn to deal with it. Hey, how is it going? So, I had a lot of expectations from this novel. I really don't like the way it turned out. I'll give it 5 on a scale of 1 to 10. But that's mainly because I thought Wishes was a good novel. If I think about this novel, without comparing it to Wishes, I'd give it a 6. It was good, but I don't like the chaotic family thing. I mean, this is not a joke. Those kids deal with a lot. I don't know, in this novel, things just magically got resolved. Like Daria and her mom talked, and things were okay between them. But that's the issue in a chaotic family. No one talks, and even if they talk, there is miscommunication. So I don't know, I feel that maybe if Daria and her mother were working on their relationship for 10 to 12 chapters, I would have been more convinced. Maybe you'll feel different about this novel. Still, there was something Daria said which made sense. She said that someone needed to take a step back and let us all heal. That was actually beautiful and true. So, it's up to you if you want to read this novel. 
I didn't like it very much, but maybe you will. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Follow me on Instagram. Let me know what was your favorite part of the video or which novel I should review next or just say hi. That's fine too. And above all that, everybody have an amazing day. I'll see you all next Monday.